Next, Under the Lights. We're in Tallahassee where state champions are crowned. We earned our right to be here. We earned our right to be here. It ain't no fluke. It's not good. Who's getting the Gatorade shower? <laughs> All of Tallahassee came out to see Florida High take the field. Why, why, why? Mr. Bluntstown leads the Tigers against mighty Madison County. We take a look at next week's state finals in Daytona. That's next, Under the Lights. Hi, and welcome once again to Under the Lights, Florida High School football final. Driven by Honda, I'm Dave Azer, and this is Kaylee Mizell. Well, thank you so much, Dave. All the work, all the anticipation, all year, leading up to one final weekend for Class 1 through 3A, one final championship game. Class 4 through 8A will play next week in Daytona. Okay, so let's get it started. We are starting with Class 3A, the returning champion, Shamanad Madonna, walking through the competition so far. Yeah, the road to Tallahassee for Chaminade, not too rough. They started by beating Somerset 56-0, then plow through Calvary Christian 35-0. Finally, they defeated Clearwater Central Catholic 28-7. And I'm not sure if you're counting, but the Lions only gave up seven points so far in the playoff. And Dave, this senior class, they know all too well about the state championship. This is the fourth straight state championship game appearance. In total, they've been to eight of these. No, oh, yeah, they won their last two. Florida High, a totally different story. This is their first ever state championship appearance. So here we go, the 3A finals in Tallahassee, Florida High focused as they look to take down Chaminade Madonna on the game's first drive. Chaminade's Thad Franklin punches it in from four yards out. It's 7-0 Lions, and Franklin was just warming up. Next Chaminade drive, Franklin again right up the gut. This run takes the ball down to the four, where Franklin would get the ball again and find the end zone again. 14-0 Lions. The Knowles behind quarterback Willie Taggart Jr. They would get on the board. The QB off play action fires deep and hits Amari Harvey. And Harvey is headed for a touchdown and nobody is going to stop him. He will score and the Florida High fans in attendance love it. The Knowles now trail 14-7. But here we go again. Thad Franklin gets back to work. Off left tackle, down the left sideline. Forget about it. He was a one-man wrecking crew. This 65-yard run takes the ball down to the one where he'd get the call again and find the end zone again. His third TD makes it 21-7 Lions at the half. New half, same story, more Franklin. This 14-yard run up the gut gives him four touchdowns on the day and extends the lead to 28-7. The only people who could hit him, apparently, were his teammates. Taggart and the Knowles not giving up. This beautifully thrown 14-yarder to George Henderson cuts the lead at 28-14. By the way, Willie Taggart Sr., he likes what he sees right there. The Knowles are feeling better about things. That momentum continues when Alfred Menner scores from one yard out. Extra point, no good. 28-20, but the day belonged to Thaddeus Franklin. Look at the determination he uses to shed tacklers, stay upright, and find the end zone. This makes it 35-20, and that is how it ends. Shamanad Madonna wins its third straight Class 3A championship behind an incredible record-setting day by Franklin. More on that later, and head coach Damian Jones knows how special his running back is. He's been doing their thing all year. All year, so I'm proud of them, man. They lights nice out. 333, five touchdowns, 47 carries. That's the official stat line. He's been our workhorse all year. So why not get this big game and change it up? Do it, do what got you here. Dave, you called Thad Franklin's name a whole mess of times in those highlights. There's no doubt it was the Thaddeus Franklin show. In fact, Franklin broke the FHSAA record for most rushing yards and most carries in a game. He finished the game with 47 carries, 333 yards, five touchdowns. Here is the humble Franklin on his record-setting championship day. So, <laughs> I don't even know what to say on that, but all I can do is thank my, thank my teammates and the coaches. So, yeah, I just did it for my team. The plan was to uh, throw the ball in, run the ball, but I guess we just ran it, so. So Wright is named down in the record books for the most rushing yards, 333. He passes Travis Henry, who set the mark for Frostproof with 328 yards. The record set back in 1996. Henry did that on 34 carries. The record stood, Dave, for a decade and some. So many good plays in this championship game, but how about some of the hitting? Our Vigo stick of the week goes to Shamanad middle linebacker Dylan Reed. Dylan brought the pain. 
back-to-back -back sticks. He is our Vico Stick of the Week. Let's bring in our state record holder, Josh Wilson, the founder of FloridaHSFootball.com. You know, Josh is doing double duty for us over these next couple of weeks, pretty much living out of a suitcase. So we're thrilled we had a chance to catch up with him when he was in our Orlando studio to get a Daytona preview. Okay, Josh, let's get straight to, to, to it. 8A action, Apopka and Columbus. Now, I know these two teams have met before back in 2014. Apopka took that win, 3-23. But we've been talking all year this year about Columbus. So give us some insight into this Apopka team. Start with this 300 monster that they've got it with the Blue Darters. Running back Jaquan Lohman leads the offense, but on defense, there's a two-headed monster there with Jalen Carter leading the team in sacks and Josiah Robinson leading the team in tackles. Right there, all three of those guys are the ones that are making the name for Popka, and that's why Popka is headed back to state for the first time since 2014. Josh, what are the keys to the game? It sounds like a battle of run defenses and who can stop the run. Keys to the game for Columbus. Henry Parrish has got to be able to establish himself in the running game, especially the fact that he has to know where Jalen Carter and Josiah Robinson are on the field. Now, what will help him get that going, the running game going, is if Columbus establishes the passing game and keeps a balanced attack on offense. Now, for Popka on the other side of things with them, what they've got going on, Popka's going to be able to have the establish the run early because if Columbus knows that they can keep the running game down for Apopka, it's going to force Apopka to pass, which is something that they don't traditionally do. This is something that has been known for years, that Apopka doesn't traditionally go with passing offenses. And if they force Apopka into passing, it could lead right into the hands of the Columbus defense. Thanks, Josh. An all-state plug here. Roberts has 31 tackles on the year, including six sacks. Um, I see a lot of double teams, and like, you know, um, I don't mind seeing double teams. Um, I feel, um, I feel that that's like a compliment to me. Hide your quarterback, that's my slogan. Hide your quarterback. My mom kind of started that. I have a shirt and everything. <laughs> it's the end of the first quarter already, and records are made to be broken. Look at you, a double tease. Coming up, how football helped a town heal. They wanted us to play. It, it, it gave the kids something to latch on to other than that existence. Under the Lights is driven by Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today by Vico Painting Contractors, a commercial painting company that delivers top quality work and excellent customer satisfaction. And by Orlando Health, a not-for-profit network of leading community hospital. Welcome back to Florida High School Football Final Under the Lights. We still have two more state title games to get to, and next up, Class 2A, and a battle between Victory Christian and Shepard Not Catholic out of Hialeah. The Storm's quarterback, Jeremiah Bird, keeps the ball, and Dave, he goes 23 yards to the corner of the end zone for the first score of the night. Storm are up 7-0. And then two minutes later, the Lions respond. Ryle Agula finding Donovan Jones for the score. And then the ref sends the kicker off the field for not having his mouth guard. So coach says, hey, what the heck? Why not go for two? And guess what? It works. Everett Bradley powers his way to the end zone. Lions up 8-7. Champenot Catholic builds Agula on the run, drops it in the bucket for Malik Rutherford. A perfect pass, 69 yards and the Lions are up 15-7 over Victory Christian. This time, Coach decides to go with kicker Ethan Moncada, who adds two 28-yard field goals, Lions roaring 21-7, and then Agula wasn't done. He links up with his third receiver of the night in John Kwai Lewis, it also his third touchdown of the night. Victory Christian's ground game stifled for most of the night, but Cornelius Shaw takes the rock 16 yards to the house, four minutes left to play, but it wasn't enough. The Lions punch it in once more and take the Class 2A, 2A state title for the third time, 35-14. It's a testament to them, man. I mean, they're awesome kids. You know, some of these kids, some people don't even know what they go through in life. Um, and for them to be out here, go to practice every day, do everything that, that, that we ask of them, this, this is their prize. You know, this is their dream, and, and it's, it's, it's being accomplished. Well, you don't see this every day, not how Victory Christian wanted this punt to go. Punter and QB Jeremiah Bird doesn't quite get this punt to leave the bird's nest. He actually nails his tackle in the behind. What makes it remarkable is Bird catches the punt and tries to pick up the first down. That is our Advent Health Kick of the Week.
Let's bring in Josh Wilson once again. Josh, the Class 4A state title game pits Booker T. Washington against Bulls. Okay, let's first focus on Booker T. Who are the names that we need to know from this team? Two names, Tori Morrison and Ja'Cory Brooks. Both of them have been the, the biggest key factors for Booker T, and it's especially with the offense. I mean, and Tory Morrison, you know, over uh, nearly 3,000 yards passing, Brooks over 1,000 yards receiving. That's the big thing, the reason why Booker T is back in the state championship game. The speed for Booker T Washington is going to be a considerable factor for Bulls, but considering that they not only got speed on offense, but it's defense that, that's got speed as well. And will Bulls be able to keep up with that? That's going to be a great question. Moving along to 5A, we've got Jones and Miami Northwestern. So give us the keys to the game, starting with Jones. When Jones is on the offensive side of the ball, several players you've really got to keep an eye on is linebacker Terrence Lewis, defensive end and linebacker Waddy Huggins, and defensive end Ja'Cory Hammond. You've got to keep an eye on all three of those players because those three players are, are, are the big playmakers for the Bulls. Now, for Miami Northwestern, you definitely have got to keep an eye on Avaria Sparrow that you have to contain him. With over 2,000 yards rushing this season, he is definitely the biggest threat for Jones. Jones is not much of a passing team. Yeah, they will throw the ball at some times, but when it comes to getting offensive yards, they're going to hand it off to Sparrow, and they're going to feed Sparrow the ball. And that brings us to Class 6A, where Escambia is set to meet Miami Central. Okay, Josh, how do the Rockets pull this one out? This is going to be a big challenge right here. Scambia is making their first state title appearance in 20 years. Miami Central, the first time since 2015. For Miami Central, you've got to know where quarterback A.V. Smith is and running back Frank Preston are on the field because those two players are the key offensive weapons. For Miami Central on offense, you've got to know where Tony Brodnax is on the field. He's the leader leading in the interceptions for Escambia. For Travis Marsh, you don't want to throw into his direction because if you do, he's likely going to pick you off with 10 interceptions already this season. And again, it's going to come down to the key being can Escambia contain Miami Central speed because Miami Central is that, you know, they've got playmakers on both sides of the ball and they have played nobody on their schedule that has this kind of speed that like Miami Central has. And it's going to be a whole new reality when they play them in Daytona Beach. Thank you, Josh. We will see you again soon. Stay where you're at. We've got more championship football headed your way. Coming up, how football helped a town heal. It wasn't one day. You know, this is the storm that just keeps on giving. Under the Lights is driven by Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today. By Advent Health. Our goal is to help you feel whole. And by the Florida Lottery. It's your ticket. Claim it. Welcome back to Florida High School Football Under the Lights. Earlier this year, we shared with you the incredible story of Bluntstown, who played a football game at home under the lights for the first time since Hurricane Michael. For more, here's Kaylee. Thanks, Dave. When a hurricane hits, the impact is immediate, and the damage doesn't end when the rain and the winds stop. When Hurricane Michael tore through Bluntstown in 2018, the community came together to find a hope that was stronger than Michael ever was. Football has always been the lifeblood of Bluntstown, a small timber-dependent town in the Panhandle, about an hour west of Tallahassee. The high school football team last won their state title in 1977. It was October 2018, and the team was preparing to face their rival in St. Joe. But Hurricane Michael changed the course of their lives forever. By the end of Monday's practice, uh, we told the kids, I said, look, I, we're, we're not doing anything tomorrow, and, and I don't get scared of weather, but this is bad. This is bad. And I said, uh, I'm going to take my son. And take my son and wife and we're going to uh, evacuate. We was just driving home and we was laughing and joking about it, thinking it wasn't going to be nothing serious. And we was in the house just playing Fortnite like regular kids. Wi-Fi goes out, and my gang goes out, lights go out, my phone starts charging. So then we start worrying a little bit and then it just like hits us. It's like boom, trees falling, it's just everything's crashing around us. The only thing I can equate it to when you get back is a war zone. I mean, there was just Looked like a bomb went off, and then there's guardsmen in town making sure people get gas. And uh, like I said, you drive by your own driveway because nothing looks right. Uh, they would just, grown men would just cry. The town needed something to root for. So eight days after Hurricane Michael, the community joined for a sausage dog fest and decided how to proceed. We had to have meetings about whether we really wanted to 
to continue or not. We didn't have any bleachers, we didn't have any lights. We were about to play on the road every game. Our field house had no electricity. So they band together and fought for their high school football team. They wanted us to play. It, it, it gave the kids something to latch on to other than that existence that we were all living. And it gave the town something to, to latch on to. It wasn't one day. You know, this is the storm that just keeps on giving. And so you have to you decide how you're going to handle it. You know, are you going to lay down? Or are you going to dig deep and move forward? It wasn't easy. Hurricane Michael destroyed the football field. The bleachers were mangled. Families stayed in the field house. The clubhouse turned into a general store. It was hard because a lot of kids uh, had to help their parents and stuff, so we'd practice early in the morning, and then that'd give us the rest of the day to help our family do whatever. Over a year later, there's still more to be done in Bluntstown. 10% of the high school is still homeless or displaced, but they've used the fun in football to move forward. To see where we're at now, it is amazing, and we are very blessed. There could have been a lot more people killed in that thing. We got Christmas lights up early this year and the town's decorated and everybody's fired up for the Tigers. Uh, a year later, uh, we are very blessed. Dave, their story is one for the books and their time under the lights in the state championship is up next. Fourth quarter is coming up. You know what that means. Get those hands up. More to come. The 1A finals are next. The Florida Lottery Pick 4 Player of the Week is Tony Brodnax from Escambia High School. The defensive back had two interceptions with one of those returned for a touchdown. Now time for the Florida Lottery Pick 4 Player of the Week. Just because we don't have that many games doesn't mean we don't have top performances. Two state record holders. Are you kidding me? Go out and vote by using the hashtag UTLFlorida on Twitter. We'll reveal the winner in next week's show. Welcome back. As our state championship game coverage continues, we turn our attention to Class 1A, where Bluntstown and Madison County are on a collision course, standing ready to play for it all. For Madison County, they're making their third straight state championship game appearance. Madison County also looking for their third straight title. The Cowboys last took the meeting between these two teams in 2017. Here we go, and here goes Madison County's Zachariah Jones catching the pass from Vincente Allen and sprinting down the sideline. He's pushed out, but the Cowboys would score and lead 7-0. Bluntstown's turn. Their star running back, Trevin Smith, answers from five yards out. Extra point no good, 7-6. After an onside kick, Trevin says, you know what, Coach, I could do better than five yards. And he does from 35 yards out and let the scoring barrage begin. Kaylee, I hope you like offense. Oh, I do. Here we go. Madison County answers with some gritty running by their fullback, getting those tough yards. Then, Trevin Smith says, hey, uh, I could do better than 35 yards. So he does. Look at the game-breaking speed. He was on his way to a historic day for the Tigers. More on that later. And the fans are loving it. Dude gets a standing O. Now it's the Cowboys' turn. Allen to Jones once again. And what a great catch by Zechariah Jones. Talk about high pointing the ball. Getting dizzy yet? We got more to go. When Sante Allen is more than just a thrower, he's a runner too. Gets a, break, a great block from his big offensive tackle, Zane Herring, and he's gone. Touchdown. And even though he's gone, uh, now he's coming back because Allen heaves a deep pass to Darion Statton, hauls it in. And then Allen's going to finish the drive himself on a sweep, and he's going to break a couple of tackles and find the end zone. This man will not be denied his touchdown. The Tigers doing their best to hang on thanks to Trevin Smith. Dude puts the team on his back. He takes the run up the middle. He then busts it outside. He sees nothing but green in front of him. Smith scores again. This game had everything, including trickery. Allen to Staden. Double pass. Hot route. Staten chucks this, he finds Jacolman Young, who's got one man to beat, and he does, and he scores. Vasante Allen had a day. He was a touchdown machine in the air, and on the ground too, Madison County wins 70 to 35, capturing their third consecutive state title and silencing the Datters who said they couldn't repeat. In this 2020 group, they just, they willed us through it, you know, and with the schedule we played, I'll put our schedule up against anybody in the state of Florida, you know. And we, and we played that schedule with about 37 players most of the year. So all about these kids and the work they put in and their willingness 
to do what we ask them to do. While the outcome wasn't what Bluntstown hoped for, senior running back Trevin Smith had a game for the ages, finishing with five touchdowns and 365 yards. Remember how we told you that Dad Franklin set a championship game rushing record Friday? Well, that didn't last long. Smith broke it Saturday, and now he holds the new state record. This game had so many highlights, you didn't even see them all. Here's another one. Madison County's Octavius Davis takes the kick, and nobody's going to bring him down. It is our Orlando Health return of the week, and yet another example of the Cowboys' explosiveness. Way to hustle, and what a great name, Octavius Davis. And now we bring back in Josh Wilson from FloridaHSFootball.com to talk about what you've all been waiting for. That's right, the Class 7A title game. Okay, Josh, Edgewater against St. Thomas. Who are the difference makers in this one? you got to know where the Conley brothers are out on the field, especially with Isaiah, because he has over 2,000 yards rushing. If you don't know where he's at and you don't know where Mobley is out on the field, they will dominate you. They will light you up on the field. And that's where you know, St. Thomas Aquinas has to be the biggest worry about. For Edgewater, you got to definitely be keep an eye on St. Thomas Aquinas' defense because especially if they pin you deep on punts, you know, the thing is that they, they know how to score on defense, and they will score on you if you're not careful. So you, if, you, if you get pinned deep, just run the ball three times, let punt it back to them. That way you don't get yourself into costly mistakes and costly, you know, points because if you get points away in this game, it will be. Good night, Edgewater. Thank you, Josh. See you in Daytona. On a St. Thomas team full of stars, one of the ones who shines the brightest is wide receiver Marcus Rosemey. Venice got an up-close and personal look as to who the best wide receiver in the state is in the semifinal game where Rosemey displayed his strength, taking a slant and running through the defense, doing what we call grown man running. He is a vital part of the St. Thomas offense, and he can't be overlooked. I'm known for deep shot threats. I'm a, I'm a deep threat. I'll say, oh, I could, I could take a slant, take it to the house. And that ball hit my hands, and I have an opportunity to turn up field and score a touchdown for my team and hear the fans yelling. And but I get my teammates hype, and I just, I don't know, it's something about it that just made me get hype. I just want to dance or something. Sadly, that's all the time we have, but we will see you again next week with more state championship coverage. And congratulations to the, all the state title winners this week. This has been Under the Lights, Florida High School Football Final, driven by Honda. Under the